takes the field under the field direction of drum major Duncan Jordan and band captains Jonathan Sugg and Hannah Ivey allow us first to set the stage. 120 years ago, the English writer H.G. Wells penned what would become a science fiction classic. The book, The War of the Worlds. And 80 years ago, Orson Welles brought the story to the airwaves. This fall, the Pride of Eastside will present the story on football fields across North Georgia. Step with us, back in time, as... The Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations present Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air in The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of the Mercury Theater and star of these broadcasts, Orson Welles. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than ours. We know now that as human beings busied themselves about their various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied. With infinite complacence, people went to and fro over the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this planet we call our home. Yet across space, Martians slowly and surely drew their plans against us. The Pride of Isai. of John Philip Sousa and his great band with The Transit of Venus. to bring you a special bulletin. We are unable to continue the broadcast. We can confirm Martian forces have attacked New York City. Tonight we're going to jump forward in our story as a favor to Mr. Beard and the, as a contest tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Incredible as it may seem, both the observations of science and the evidence of our eyes lead to the inescapable assumption that those strange beings who landed tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. The battle which took place has ended in one of the most startling defeats ever suffered by any army in modern times. The Martians are now in control of the entire Northeast. Highways to the North, South, and West are clogged with frantic human traffic. Police and army reserves are unable to control the mad flight. The desolation is real. At this time, the future is bleak.
ladies and gentlemen. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And we will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind. That word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by the petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps it is fate that today is the 4th of July, and we will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win today, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world is heard in one voice. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. Because we're going to live on. We are going to survive. Today, we celebrate our independence day.